Okay, everybody, here we go. I think, I think I'm live. I think, I think things are okay. All right, let's talk you and me, people. Uh, so post-market wrap-up on this Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, uh, April 6, 2023. By the way, just real quick, uh, the market is closed tomorrow. So that means I get a day off. I get an extra day off. And I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I want to talk about a lot of things today here, this whole issue with uh, global dollar. Uh, you know, people want to get rid of the dollar, uh, de-dollarization here. And I get it. I, I really do. But what I want to cover here is what maybe people aren't considering and aren't thinking about with regards to that. Look, I, I, the whole system, it's sick. It's vomitous. It's twisted. And that that's a fact. I think you know all of us here would agree. But, but, how many of you have considered what it would actually mean if the dollar was quote unquote dethroned? Now, before we get there and talk about that whole thing, I want to talk about a few other things first. Here, so as I said, there's no trading tomorrow. Despite that, the market didn't do anything today. It looks like people are willing to carry risk through the weekend here. And, and there's a reason for that too. All right. This new new round of quantitative easing going on by the Federal Reserve. It's a big secret. Don't tell anyone. No one's supposed to know, but that is happening right now. Thank you, Peter. Um, the Fed is in, involved. They're engaged right now in full-on quantitative easing, which is the opposite of quantitative tightening. You don't believe me? Go look at that balance sheet. I mean, it's right on their own freaking website. The truth is always hidden in plain freaking sight. See what I'm saying? All right. So, so, so with that said, um, market didn't do anything really today. The NASDAQ put on the biggest gain, um, it, it relatively flat all, all together. As a matter of fact, everything was flat. Cryptocurrency is relatively flat. Gold and silver, relatively flat. Gold did fall slightly today. We're talking about the paper garbage derivative here. Uh, crude oil didn't do too much. Dollar relative strength didn't do too much. A uh, 10-year yield slightly lower here. Now, let's talk about that. Why are people now willing to carry risk into uh, a weekend? Generally, when you have a long weekend like this, you see the market tend to drop. Okay, we didn't, we didn't nothing happened here. Now, why? Because people don't like to hold risk assets through a weekend, traders, for example. Okay, but... We heard from Fed President Bullard, I mean Bullard today. Bullard, Bullard, this is another creature that they float out almost all the time. He's their go-to guy when they want to put out some type of propaganda or uh, they want to appease the market. Okay. So what Bullard, Bullard had to say uh, is very interesting. This is a quote, financial system stress has declined in recent days. You see, what he can't say and what you will not hear from the mainstream is this is quantitative easing. Yet again, and you again, I'm urging you, look at the Federal Reserve's own website, their balance sheet, boom, like four or five hundred billion dollars in just a couple of weeks here, three weeks, five months, five freaking months of quantitative tightening just evaporated in three weeks as the Fed continues to pump the market. Now, a big part of why risk is abating here and, and playing off of what Bultard had to say here is I know for a fact, all of you that are watching this blog here or follow my work, you're all keeping your eye on the debt market, which is the number one driver of the stock market. What is the stock market? You know what it is. The stock market is a derivative, meaning it derives value from what's happening in the debt market. Now, we're seeing rates drop. As a matter of fact, turn on CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business. They're talking about how the yield curve is dropping substantially. Why is this happening? Is, is it like, again, is it just some kind of miracle sent from the divine here? No, this is central banks. They're in here. They're buying it, buying it all. Clearly, they're they are fostering the illusion of stability here, and, and this the market the market is loving it. And again, they float out Bultard to say, hey, you know what, everyone, 
you know, in case you don't know, uh, yeah, we are easing once again, and risk has lessened in the financial system. Risk hasn't lessened at all. Okay, all they're doing yet again is pumping it full of more heroin. That's all this is creating distortions across the spectrum of asset classes, hyperinflating this debt bubble that we already have. How do I say this another way? Okay, let, let, let me think for a moment here. For those of you that follow this blog and have any clue as to what's actually happening, we are in a full on, full blown currency crisis, a liquidity crisis, a debt crisis, it, 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 crisis after crisis, and it's all being propped up. What do we know central banks are doing? Deliberately destroying the purchasing power of their respective currencies. It's really kind of a race to the bottom. Who can devalue their currency more faster? You understand? Okay. Why is this happening? A new system is going to be rolled out. A new system. You all know that. At the same time, it's an inter interesting paradox. We have a world awash in debt. Central banks continue to pump the system. Meanwhile, no matter what they do, it's never enough. It can never be enough. The debt-based system demands, as you all know, that this debt be pulled into the system in greater and greater and greater and greater and greater amounts. It can't stop. Thank you, Joey Sox. So understanding, it, no matter what they do, they can't make the system ever be liquid. The, the system operates at a perpetual or in a perpetual deficit. You understand? Now, speaking of debts and deficits, which you and I realize since time immemorial are going to continue to get worse on the economic frontier. This is this is pretty. Um, I mean, nothing that you and I would not have had, have expected here with the personal savings rate right now, as we as I have covered here uh, is in the negative. But we just found out today that now we are the personal savings rate is lower today than during the Great Recession. Not only that, so we have another thing going on. So personal savings rate is just gone. It's negative. Okay. And we have credit card debt, again, at another all-time record high. This is people trying to make ends meet in this deliberate um, environment of surging inflation as central banks, none more so than the Fed, is deliberately sucking the purchasing power of the currency out. You understand? So I covered Boltard with you and his, uh, his, 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 his message to the market. If you look at how this played out today. So earlier, the, the market was lower. The stocks were under pressure. The Dow was down roughly 130 points. Then all of a sudden, they flowed out Boltard. They always do this. It's how you know they, they jawbone the market. Boltard comes out to let us all know that, hey, risk in the markets has lessened as of late. Why? He can't say it because the Fed is involved in full-blown quantitative easing. They're pumping the system yet again. And all this is doing, people, parabolic debt. Lava Girl, you're amazing. Yeah, it's power freaking bolic debt. Uh, and it can't stop. It will never stop until it does. And when it does, we have a tool to watch it. It's called the MMRI, people. I just wrote a piece about the MMRI, the true calculation behind the MMRI. Go check your inbox. Uh, I know all of you here do subscribe to my my free newsletter. Hey, real quick, I have 1,285 people here watching, 326 thumbs up. That's pretty bad. That, that's pretty bad. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate that. Can we fix this, people? Really fix that for me. Somebody do something. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, so we covered Boltard. We covered the fact that we were in a full-blown liquidity crisis, a debt crisis, however you want to look at it. And, and it's just not going to stop until it does. Uh, I have covered the economic news here. Um, it's, it's, it's insane. And then, then with that said, I already talked about the markets. So let's talk about this dollar uh, de-dollarization of, of the world, which is happening, which is clearly happening. Okay. Let me put a perspective on this for you. Any nation that has the privilege of having the world reserve currency gets to export its inflation to the rest of the world. That's essentially how it works. Now, the entire Vietnam War was fought. Millions of people died Okay, um, to establish the petrodollar. You all know what the petrodollar is. OPEC agreed to price their oil in U.S. dollars for military protection, U.S. military protection of their oil. 
Okay, we, you, your your tax dollars go to protect the oil of OPEC nations. Uh, maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you do know that. Um, I, I hope you are aware of that at least now. Uh, so they've killed. They will kill untold amount split spl splatter blood and guts from one end of the earth to the other to keep the petrodollar going, which gives the U.S. dollar its reserve status. You understand? Um, when any nation, well, this is starting to change. This is changing. But when, generally speaking, when a nation wants to buy crude oil from an OPEC nation, they have to convert their currency first into U.S. dollars, which creates an ever-increasing demand, or it used to, for U.S. dollars. You understand? The Federal Reserve will defend the petrol dollar, um, and they have the entire arsenal of the U.S. military, including its nuclear arm, that they will point outward or inward to defend it. You understand? We have this whole issue. With, look, it's almost like a messianic kind of, uh, it's interesting how people are. People are looking to be saved one way or the other. They think this guy or girl is going to save them. They think a gold standard is going to save them. Uh, no. Okay. If you believe that, your faith is clearly in the wrong place, sir. Uh so people will talk about, hey, what about the BRICS? What about the BRICS? What about the BRICS? What about the BRICS? It's a basket of currencies here. It's not backed by anything, okay? There's a lot of talk about it, but but, but understand, they have no, there's no real interest. No central bank on this planet, thank you, Howard, has an interest at all, thank you, Eduardo, in, in backing their currency with a commodity or with gold, even on a fractional level. Why, why, why would Greg say this? The power of any central bank resides in their ability to issue debt. And even a fractional commodity-backed system would restrain spending. We That can't be allowed to happen. Thank you, Michael. Okay, so central banks, all of them, I don't care what label you want to put on them, bricks or whatever the freak it is, it ain't, ain't going to matter. Okay. Uh, and there's a lot of people and a lot of YouTubers, you know, they're floating out the theory. Oh, yeah, there's going to be a gold standard. Never. There could never be. Again, once a central bank is given that power by we the people, we allow this to happen, to, to create their product out of nothing and disperse it to the world. We all have the privilege of, of using a central bank issued currency for which we don't even own. We work for these things that aren't even ours. We're owed back. These, these bills that we work for are owed back to the issuing central bank plus interest that they magically create out of nothing, okay? So just understand what I'm telling you here. I know a lot of you want to see the demise of the dollar. It's really the demise of the debt system. A lot of people like hang their hat on the dollar. Uh, it is a unit of debt. All fiat currencies are units of debt, period, the end, okay? I think this is pretty well established. Thank you, Dean. Um, and the dollar has become, I guess, the bastard child uh, for the global debt-based economic model. But every single developed nation on earth has the same damn perverted, twisted thing. And it's a curse upon the earth. Absolutely. When we left a commodity-backed system for a debt-based system, thank you, Ali, um, you know, that's when things started to get crazy around here, spending like we can't believe. Uh, central banks, you know, being called upon to issue more debt to the world uh, and, and, and all of us here. And now we're seeing the effects of it. This, this is not by accident. None of this is by accident. I think you all know that here. Um, thank you, Joe. Wow. Um, so, look, for those of you who are, are hoping to see the, the dollar go away, I think what you're really hoping for is for the debt-based system itself to go away. As I said, the dollar is kind of like the bastard child of the debt-based system. But every central bank is issuing their the same backed by nothing currency, you know, fiat. So so let it be. That's all it really stands for. So it is. That's and uh and central banks will never give up that power. They will kill hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of people to to keep that power. It's an unbelievable amount of power. Uh, central banks today, none more so than the Fed, because of the backing of the United States military, they must protect the petrodollar at all costs. 
uh, is the most powerful organization on the planet. There's nothing that comes close to it. Nothing. Um, so I, I hope you get that. So if in fact the world were to de-dollarize, you can rest assured that the blood, the guts, the hopes and dreams of the millions of people will be splattered from one end of the globe to the other, okay, including populations, okay? That's not just combatants like soldiers. Uh, it'll be everybody, okay? And uh, they will do what they need to do to keep their power. It's just this, it's a sick, twisted thing. But the, you know, the interesting thing is actually we have the power to take down central banks. Yes, we actually do. If we can prevent central banks, you know what I'm going to tell you? Any, let's just pick the Fed. If we had a real leader, um, which we will never have, Okay, they're all puppets. I don't care how much you love them, worship them, think savior from God, whatever it might be. We will never have a world leader. They'll end up with a bullet in their head um, that would end a central bank, especially the Federal Reserve here. Um, they run the world. Central banks are the government. Okay, they control the narrative. They control the world markets, the financial system, the economy, the flow of information here. Everything is collectively controlled by central banks who are world control, all right? Everything else is just a sideshow, all right? It's just a side act. You can think whatever you want because I, you know, that messianic, like messiah uh, thing here that some people have for certain people and they're putting their faith in the wrong spot, quite obviously, okay? A uh, man god, like uh, some, some people believe Trump is a, a man god and he's going to save them. He's the only one that can do it. You got to be kidding. Um, okay, people can think what they want to, but it's a, they're all going to end it's ended up in the same way. Despair, depression, a loss of hope. And then, of course, when it doesn't happen, these same people blame something. Oh, well, well you know, he couldn't get it done because of this or because of that. It's, it's, that's really the truth. Here. You stop with this nonsense here. Let's talk about reality. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate that. But look, all of you get it here. All right. All of you, I believe, are of a higher intellect. And you're able to just put these things together. It's not hard. The things that I cover, what I what I talk about here, is it's it's really cause and effect. Thank you, Shivan 2418. Um, markets, really markets, economies, uh, the entire financial system is cause and effect. If this happens, something is going to come out of it. You understand? Like for example, going back to the last meltdown here where we had the market crash, the whole issue with real estate. Uh, what was the market trying to do? It was trying to establish fair value. It uh, wasn't allowed to do that. This is why I have said for so long, you, you remember what happened when the Dow Jones Industrial Average literally <laughs> cratered? What did the Fed do? They jumped in here at Dow 6,000. At Dow 6,000 to start propping up the market. That was QE1. Uh, when soon as that they started to ease up on QE1, Markets started to drop. They instituted quantitative easing too. When they eased up on that, markets started to drop. They instituted Operation Twist, basically swapping long bonds for short bonds and short bonds for long bonds, trying to prop the system up. This has created what? Distortions that we've never seen before in the history of the world. Thank you, Roberto. Roberto. Uh, across, I mean, nothing makes sense anymore. Markets used to be, again, they used to be a buyer and a seller, uh, and they would kind of whatever asset it might be, a currency, a stock, an exchange traded fund, a commodity, you know, the buyer would be willing to sell and the buyer, the seller would be willing to buy, blah, blah, blah. You know, they would come up with a, um, a fair price. But when you have central banks in here who are the monster in the room, um, basically propping everything up, there's no real price discovery mechanism. I've covered this a gazillion times. Greg Harry, thank you. That's the truth. You understand what I'm saying here? So there's no real market. It's completely 100% fake. The economy, 100% fake. Everything. And it's all, again, by design. It's, it's, it's a way to keep people distracted. Why do you think big things go on? For example, the arrest of Donald Trump. Look here. Don't look over there. I know that's what all of you were doing here. You were laughing when you saw this. You know what's actually going on here. Nothing is what it seems to be. If you believe this is what it is at face value, then you're completely lost. 
Um, it's, it's always the same deception, the same tactic. They've used the same thing repeatedly over and over and over. It just doesn't stop. Okay. Um, but we know who the enemy is. We know their agenda. We know what they want to achieve. World control, central banks, world control, period. The end. Who's paying, who's paying for all of this? You and I, by this inflation tax. And if you think inflation tax is going to get any better for you, like you're going to have some saving grace here. Well, I got, I got news for you. No, there's no saving grace at all. Um, and what we're living in, in case you don't know as well, uh, is, 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 is the side effect of what central banks have been doing uh, they planned for us from decades ago. This is all a game. And once you understand the game, everything will become clear to you. And that's what I'm trying to do. All I want is people to understand the system, really. I don't think there's a guy who studies it more than I do and thinks about it more than I do. Uh, maybe some of you out here, you know, you get it. Once you get it, it just, you know, it's almost like a, uh, a light goes off in your head and you and you say, wow, hold on a minute here. Uh, yeah, I, I do see what's going on here. And but but what does that do for you and I? It's not a matter of, OK, we know this and we see this and we know what the grand plan is. What essential banks want to do, become the lenders and buyers of last resort. They're going to inflate the system until they're done. They're going to kill the system here as they're in the process of doing now. OK, then it's going to really start to tumble. But you and I, OK, by understanding these things. It gives us an unbelievable, insurmountable edge. All right. We know what to do. We know why we're doing it. We're not going to stop betting against the debt, becoming our own central bank, holding hard assets. Um, my favorite of all time. I'm going to keep showing it to you right here. One of you gave this to me. I want to thank you for that. Um, anyway, uh, that's what we're going to do. They're going to play their game. We know their game. We can't really stop it. Okay. We don't have any anyone strong enough to allow that to happen. Um if, for example, let's just say those of you that have a particular person that you may look up to with a tremendous audience, you know, I'm talking about millions of people. If they would explain the system to the people, hey, listen, we got to end central banking. We can kill them by stopping them from issuing one single dollar of debt like I was leading to before. If we could prevent one central bank, just let's say the Federal Reserve, from issuing one dollar, one dollar of more debt. The, the entire system implodes. Again, it's a debt-based. It demands that every second of every day, debt is pulled into the now from the future. It's created magically. You understand? If we can prevent that, just one dollar, I'm not, I'm not like exaggerating, one dollar, the Fed would go down and every other central bank around the world would follow a domino effect. We could kill central banking by this, okay? But there's no one strong enough to allow this to happen here. The central banks have full control, absolute control. And this is why we're going, they're going to kill the current system to issue in a new system, all about control on a monumental scale. I, I've talked about this before, and I think most of you get it. I got such a sunburn on my neck here from when I was at the track the other day. <laughs> anyway, people, what else can I tell you? All right. I'm working as hard as I can to keep all of you ahead of, ahead of the curve and all of you here, uh, I can't thank you enough for, um, you know, backing me up here, uh, getting this stuff out. I don't know. I really look, I don't follow anybody else. I know some of you do here. Um, I like to look at the situation and come up with my own perspective on it. OK, I used to years ago follow a lot of people uh, and I, I started to hear what they would say. And it kind of like would play with my brain a little bit. So I don't do that anymore. But for those of you that do, um, you know, I don't know where you're, if you're hearing this kind of stuff here from, from anywhere else. And I hope you are. For and I know there's people that follow my work that have their own YouTube channels. And I, I, I'm all for them using my, my work. You know, spread this stuff. Get it out there. Hey, Greg Manorino said this. Is it true? Um, maybe that would be fantastic if, um, you know, somebody would say, Greg said this. Let's do a little research and find out if it's actually true. And I always urge people to, you know, obviously listen to what I say. Does it make sense to you? People know the truth when they hear it. It's called intellect. It's a God-given gift. If it doesn't make sense to you, that's fine. It doesn't mean you're wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Um, and I'm willing to accept that. If someone shows me proof of something, 
that I have, let's say, a firm belief in, I am more than willing to say, hold on a minute, Greg. You know what? Maybe you got this wrong. Um, you know, th this is really what's happening. This is how we grow uh, in, in, in life here, you know, from not repeating the same mistakes over and over again here. And sometimes even me, you know, I got to make the same mistake 50 times before I finally realize it, that I got it wrong. You know, what's the definition of insanity? Oh, it really isn't, but this is what they say, doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different outcome. Um, it just doesn't work. Anyway, people, what else can I tell you? I think uh, Craig is Eddie Monster. You think I look like Eddie Monster? I used to love that show when I was a kid. Um, I will take that as a compliment, the little, the little ghoulish kid. Uh, you know, we all can't be like uh, George Clooney, I guess. Yeah, no one ever said I was the best looking guy around. Um, all right, people, look, uh, this guy here loves you from the heart. I mean that with all I got. And I want to thank all of you, not just Lyle Girl, because she's fantastic. Um, and she does a great job here. Um, I, you know, I don't know what I did to deserve people like Lava Girl and all of you here who support my work um, and try to get it out there. But I just... I'm so grateful for that. I really am. I am absolutely so grateful for that. Uh, with that said, people, look, uh, you're not going to see me tomorrow. Mark is closed. Saturday, generally my day off. Um, Sunday, you will see me for my markets at Look Ahead. Thank you, Donald Trump. I appreciate that. Donald Trump is in the room. I do appreciate that, Donald. I really do. And Donald, I I'll be honest with you. Let I offered my help to you when you were president last time, you were, you were surrounded by what I'd call the Confederacy of Dunces. Donald Trump last time, thank you, Heather, he was president. I think he was surrounded by imbeciles of the highest possible order, regardless of what your opinion of President Trump was. Thank you, Agatha. Uh, I think, and I believe I have a handle on this. And I, 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 I offered my help to the president at the time, President Trump, um, Biden, the man couldn't understand a damn thing if I said it to him anyway. <laughs> so it's, I think he's completely brain dead, but that's just my thing on that. All right, people, look, love you a lot. I will see you Sunday. Uh, hold that thought. Hold that thought a moment here. Remember this? I showed it to you. Stock Traders Almanac. I get it every year. I've been buying these for years. And I, I'm not, I don't make a profit off this, but yes, my friend Jeffrey does publish this. Jeffrey Harris. Um it's a great, it's a great little resource to have for you traders. It tells you when the market's closed and what's going on. Yeah, Monday. Monday the market is open. So I'll see you Sunday for my markets a look ahead. And that's gonna be just lovely, as 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 you all know. All right. That's all, people. All right, have a great weekend. Be safe. Remember, you're not gonna see me tomorrow, but I'll see you Sunday. All right. I'm out of here.